Hi, it's so good to have you join us today. My name is Mike. I'm the pastor here at Shepherd of the Hills, and we are blessed and honored to have you here for worship this morning, whatever time you're watching and worshiping with us. We are going to gather, we are going to celebrate what God has done for us, we're going to study God's Word, and we're going to sing. Let's open with prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and for being here with us today. Thank you for the ability to share worship with our congregation and guests via this new platform. God, we pray for the world that we can figure out this pandemic and find a treatment or a cure. We pray for our government leaders that they are given the guidance to figure out how we move forward from here. We pray for our essential workers that you keep them safe as they do their part to keep our country running. We pray for the children and teachers who have had to switch to online learning. Be with them as they navigate these new methods. God, give us strength each and every day as we struggle daily with this new normal. Please remind people that they are not alone out there. They have you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 
As we continue worship, there's a couple of things I just want to let you know. First of all, if you're new to our fellowship, if you haven't been part of this, this community before, we are so blessed to have you here. Please let us know who you are. There's a digital communication card in the description down below. Just click on that, fill out as much information as you feel comfortable with, and we will keep you up to date with everything going on. There is also a feedback card, a suggestion card, if you have anything you want us to let us, to let us know about. We would love to hear from you. Also, we know this is an uncertain time for everyone financially, but we still appreciate your giving. It is still a way of worship and being part of what we're doing. We are continuing to lead worship in this online format. We are continuing to educate and help kids grow in their faith. We are continuing to do ministry and be the body of Christ. And so your giving is vital in this time. We have both links to the giving down below, and we'll have the information on the screen with just how we can do that. And it is a chance for us to give out of what God has blessed us with, and a chance to be part of his mission, even when we cannot be in these places physically. Now, we are going to continue our worship with our scripture reading for this morning. Good morning. I am hoping everybody is safe and well, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody again very soon. Today's reading is Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Jesus calms the storm. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? He got up, rebuked the wind, said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. I thought I knew storms. I grew up in Minnesota, spent a lot of time in North Dakota, and we would get some doozies of storms rolling off of the plains. We would get these nasty thunderstorms, and I was out camping in more than a few of them. I remember one time I was being up at Boy Scout camp, and it was about eighth grade, and a buddy of mine and I were literally holding down the tent poles so it did not fly away. It was crazy. I remember being in college in North Dakota and the thunderstorms rolling off the plains and the sheets of rain coming down and the crack of thunder arriving at the same time as you see the flash of lightning. I thought I knew storms until I moved to Texas. We'd been out in Texas a couple of months and somebody warned us about the Blue Northers. And what they said was the sky to the north will turn this deep, dark, forbidding blue. A dark which you don't really think can exist in nature, but it does. And the temperature drops 40 degrees and the wind whips through like it's knifing your soul open. And I'll admit I didn't really believe him until I saw it happen. We were meeting in a YMCA on a Sunday night. Beautiful new facility. The whole community was new. The YMCA was new. It was gorgeous. It still had that new building smell. And sure enough, the whole of the north of the sky turned to this deep, forbidding blue. 
and the temperature dropped and the wind whipped through and the doors that were locked in the YMCA were whipped open by the wind. I thought I knew storms until I moved to Texas. Everything, as they say in Texas, is bigger, even the thunderstorms. Sheets of rain coming down so bad you can't even see the house across the street. Hail the size of grapefruit, enough to make a grown man cry. I thought I knew storms. I started my ordained career just after September 11th. I remember going out to interview in places weeks after September 11th, seeing National Guardsmen armed in the airports. I remember the sense of uncertainty, the sense of strangeness. I thought I knew storms until about five weeks ago, seven weeks ago. Now I am standing here in an empty sanctuary, not sure how long it's going to be like this. We are living in a storm the likes of which I have never experienced in my life, which is why this passage from the Gospel of Mark is so appropriate for today. You see, we're spending this time working through the Gospel of Mark because it is just a fascinating look at the life of Jesus. And this passage, this piece, just hits us so well today. The storm comes up, and we don't know what to do with it. The story is simple, as you just heard in the Gospel of Mark. It's short. Jesus and the disciples are out in a boat Jesus is asleep. The storm comes up. The disciples are freaking out, and they're saying, Jesus, don't you even care if we're going to die? And he wakes up, and he says, what? He looks at the storm and says, peace, be still. And the storm quiets down, and the disciples look at each other, and they say, who is this? the central question for the Gospel of Mark. Who is this? But before we get to that question, there's another question I want to pull out of here. The first thing I want to ask you is, what is the storm doing in your life? It is tough when the storm hits, and we don't know which way to run. We don't know what to do. It throws us into unsettled places. Part of why I wanted to go back to the robes and the sanctuary and all this stuff this morning is to bring back just a little bit of that tradition and remind us all that the Christianity has survived storms before. We have had 2,000 years of experience in every possible human context of every different way of life. From Christians behind the Iron Curtain, Christians where it has been illegal to worship, to share the faith, to places where we've used worldly power to glorify God, to places where Christians have created immense works of art and cathedrals to worship, to where we write in the dust to remind ourselves of who we are. And we have survived. And we have thrived because of where God has led us. Sometimes the storm puts us in a new place, in a new set of circumstances where we would not think to go otherwise. One of my favorite books of the Bible is Jonah. And there is this fascinating little line in there. The way the story goes is Jonah is told by God to go to Nineveh. And Jonah says, "Mm, no, not going. You want me to go that way? I'm going the other way. And he gets on on a boat to go to the ends of the earth. Literally, the way they looked at it was the ends of the earth. And he gets on the boat and the storm comes up and the the people, the sailors on the boat are saying, who is responsible for this? And eventually they figure out it's Jonah. And Jonah says, yeah, it's me. And so he says, you got to throw me over the side. And the sailors don't want to do that. They're like, okay, it might be you, but we're not really comfortable with murder here. 
And eventually, they come to the conclusion they don't have a choice. And Jonah says, yeah, you got to toss me over the side. And they do. And as soon as they do, the storm breaks. And these pagan sailors who have no knowledge of who God is stop and worship God and make sacrifices to him. It is this incredible, powerful example of the storm coming through and bringing people to God in a relationship with God who have no other way to think. These guys had never heard of the God of Israel before they encountered Jonah and probably never would have thought of even worshiping this God if it hadn't been for that storm. Do I want us to be in the middle of a global pandemic? No. Do I want to be here with an empty sanctuary? No. But sometimes these storms open up new ministries for us. There are new places that we can reach because everybody is locked down, because everybody is grasping and grappling with these existential questions, these wonderings, what is this life going to look like? We have this new opportunity. We have this new way to glorify God. And I want us to always be aware that whatever is happening, that we are called to worship, to be faithful, and to have our eyes open. You know, growing up in Minnesota, we're so used to the tornado drills of going down to the basement whenever the sirens would go off, whenever the sky would turn black. We all know who this is. But there's more to it. There's an opportunity here. No, I'm not saying that we should go stand on street corners and shout at people and tell them to repent. But I am saying that we need to pray and start asking, how do we minister in this storm and not just hunker down? You see, the thing is, is our natural reaction is to hunker down. And as you read through the Bible, you get these beautiful reactions from different people. You get the whole gamut of reactions. Whether we're talking to women as they're walking to the tomb on Easter morning, whether we're reading through the Psalms, whether we're reading any of these places, the beautiful thing about the Bible is you have real human beings reacting in real ways. So when the disciples look at Jesus and they're like, are we going to perish out here? I get it, because sometimes I feel the same way. And if I would have been with them out on the boat as the wind was coming up, I would have been just there in the middle of it. But Jesus looks up, and he's like, what are you worried about? Peace. Be still. And the wind and the waves obey him. Now, I am not a particularly peaceful person. And so whenever I hear Jesus say those things, it strikes something in me. Because I think, I want that. I want that peace. I want that assurance. I want that reminder that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That title that he has as Prince of Peace is one that I just constantly go back to. In fact, one of the things from this Easter season to remember is in the Gospel of John, the first thing that Jesus says when he sees his disciples post-resurrection is peace. Those are words we want to hang on to in the midst of this storm. We want to hang on to that peace. Everything that we do should be out of God's peace. The wind and the waves obey Jesus. The storms of life will subside. And what we want to do is come back to that. Come back to his peace, his ruling over the universe, and knowing that he is glorified. And so, friends, my charge to you this week is to find your peace in Jesus in whatever form that takes. 
Is it stepping out early in the morning before the kids wake up and reading your Bible as the sun comes up? Is it walking the neighborhoods praying for those around you? Is it going back to your first love, Jesus of Nazareth? Now, part of, as I said earlier, going back to the traditions, back to the reminders, is knowing that we've been here before. And this morning, what I want to do is not end with a prayer, as I usually do, but end with a creed. The words of the Apostles' Creed go back to the very beginning of the church, and they define who we are as a people. And when you read these words, and I'm going to ask you to say them with me. We'll have the words on the screen. What I want you to do is know that Christians across the globe and across the centuries have said these words, not as a test, not just to recite it, but to remind themselves who we are as a people. We are knit together together through what Jesus has done, knit together through whatever storms and whatever quiet times we have. We are knit together by the Prince of Peace, who even the wind and the waves obey. And so get together, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We're going to continue now with one of my favorite songs, and I know it's one of a lot of people's favorite songs. It is well with my soul. And so as you listen to this song, as you reflect on its words, may the peace which passes all understanding, the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, fill you and put you at his peace. Amen.
And so together, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Lord, we come before you today in a world in need, in a world in storm. We pray for those among us who need your healing touch. We pray that you would pour your spirit into them, give them your wisdom, your grace, put them in the right places where they can be ministered to in the midst of an uncertain time and an uncertain world. We pray, Lord, that you would be with our congregation, that you would help us to know you and glorify you, and help us to find new places to worship, new ways to reach out. We pray, Lord, that you would give us wisdom in how we can bless others in the midst of whatever storms they're dealing with. And now together we pray the words that were taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it, is, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Once again, I want to thank you for worshiping with us this morning. It has been a blessing to have you here, and we hope you are blessed to be with us this morning. As you go into this world, take this blessing with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Now, our worship does not end, but it does change form. And so we pray that you will continue to go in this world in his peace and that God will be glorified in everything that you do. Please come back again next week. And if you have people in your life who you can share this with, please let them know so that they too might be blessed. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.